Um, so everybody knows that breast cancer sucks, right? But it doesn't mean you can't do anything about it. So I pulled together some tips and tricks for how to get through the horror that is breast cancer. Tip number one, of course, have a party. Now, I know your first reaction is to break down and cry, but think about it this way. As soon as you are diagnosed with breast cancer, your breasts have an expiration date. Clock is ticking. So invite over a few friends. They will be glad to help you kiss those titties goodbye. And if you haven't been fondled by a friend recently, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Seriously, for one in eight women, these puppies are temporary. Enjoy them while you got them. Trust me, breast cancer is like the zombie apocalypse. It's coming. Okay, tip number two, smuggle a camera into surgery. How else will you get a photo like this? Right? <laughs> tip number three, Make friends with your anesthesiologist. Yes, the keywords are sub-anesthetic dose. Just a small amount of something they're gonna give you anyway means you'll spend that last few minutes before surgery recognizing how much you love your surgeon and what a great day it is to be eviscerated. <laughs> Tip number four, if you're going to be irradiated, make sure they give you the kind that gives you superpowers, not the kind that kills you. I personally was hoping for spidey webs from my wrists, but no such luck. Apparently, gamma radiation, like in a mug of scan, turns you into the Incredible Hulk, not Spider-Man. I didn't turn very green, but I got the breasts, right? Yeah, I was only an A cup before. Um, tip number five, get your hair done. The world is an incredibly forgiving place when you have breast cancer. You can look completely nuts. And people think, it's awesome and brave. Um, yeah. So, okay, so the tip so far, a little tongue-in-cheek. This one actually had a profound impact for me. If you're going to do chemotherapy, do psychedelics. Now, in seriousness, I didn't plan on doing psychedelics. I didn't plan on doing anything my medical team did not prescribe. That would be crazy, because drugs are bad, okay? But... But complication after complication actually did erode me. I had um, multiple bad post-op infections, um, multiple emergency surgeries, a bad systemic reaction to Taxol and a blood transfusion. It was bad. Um, I was fatigued. I was utterly defeated. And I realized I needed to do something. So I started researching some options. And one of the options I came up with was the therapeutic use of psychedelics. There are numerous studies going on by legitimate organizations looking at the, the therapeutic use. Now, um, check out maps.org. They're a great site for information on this. Won't go into detail, but suffice to say, I knew that because of my condition, I was looking for something with minimal cardiac impact, no um, liver or kidney toxicity, and zero chance of addiction. I might be crazy, not stupid. Um, interestingly, antidepressants don't meet those criteria, but LSD does. <laughs> um, but even after researching how safe it is, I'm a little paranoid. I only took a half a dose. That's almost sub-threshold, meaning I didn't get all the cool psychedelic hippie trip stuff all the kids are into. I didn't have the fun visuals or audio hallucinations. I just felt better. Now, there's nothing amazing about feeling good when you're high. If you don't feel good when you're high, you're pretty much doing it wrong. <laughs> but what was amazing is I still felt good the next day, and the day after that, and for over two weeks. Um, basically, I did this three times over the course of six months, and each experience, which lasted about, about eight hours, gave me enough energy to get up and get moving and get the exercise that my body so desperately needed. It got me up, I went walking on a beach, I went dancing for a few hours, and then afterwards, I was able to get back to the normal things in my normal life. I was able to get back to work, I was able to go socialize with friends, I was able to catch up on email, all the things a normal, thing, a normal person does. Basically, dropping acid restored a sense of normalcy to my otherwise fucked up life. Which brings me to number seven. Become part zombie. Yes, I have 
cadaver bits implanted, and you may wonder why this is important, but when that zombie apocalypse comes, you're going to want me to be your best friend.